everyone, my name is Susana Treviño and I'm coming to you from the Children's Museum Houston. I am one of the Basics Houston educators and today we're going to show you about one of our programs that give your child a great start in life. The Basics Houston was originally developed in Boston as the Boston Basics and brought to Houston by the Houston Health Department. We were able to partner with them to create the Basics Houston Fun Shops, which are parent and child workshops that focus on five fun and powerful ways to build your baby's brain. Why is this important? Because the first three years can have the most impact on your child's learning. 80% of brain development happens in the first three years. One of the five basics is explored through movement and play. It focuses on the importance of physical activities, exploration, and play for the development of strong, healthy, and coordinated bodies. Today, we will be reading a fun story about exploration, as well as creating a great tool to help with that exploration. But first, we invite you to watch the Basics Houston video on Explore Through Movement and Play. How do children learn to explore? Yes, go, 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 go. Good job. Physical activity, exploration, and play are important for many reasons. <laughs> One is the development of coordinated, strong, and healthy bodies. Another is that physical activities exercise the mind just as much as the body. The youngest children learn by touching, reaching, grasping, and experimenting on their surroundings. Each new phase of physical development brings new opportunities for learning and development. How did you think about letting her start to explore? Oh, she had to run to the house. <laughs> this whole floor, whole first floor was hers. So we just, you know, let her just explore. I will get down there together and crawl with her. There are simple ways to support the movements that babies make. Hey, pretty cat. You're so pretty. One is to make sure that they spend some time on their stomach every day. This is called tummy time. During tummy time, babies raise their heads and make crawling motions. Gradually, their upper body gets stronger until they can actually crawl. Tummy time also gives them a new view of their surroundings. Once children develop more mobility, you can find activities where they can move around more. We don't hover over her. We like to watch her explore her surroundings and do her own thing, because we feel like she learns a lot better that way. If she climbs over things and go down the slides, if she falls, she's learning, and that's a good thing. If children are working through something, it can be tempting to jump in quickly and show them the answer. Whoa, cool balance. <laughs> but it's better to stand back and give them a little time to figure it out. Give them a chance first. They can explore and see how things work for themselves and build that confidence and build that resilience. They'll be developing coordination and problem solving skills at the same time. Good job, Betty. There's a row of about, I guess, 10, 11 U shaped bike racks. Right. And she decided to walk under all of them. And then the last one, she decided to hang from it. And I hadn't seen her do that before. All right. So I believe she was testing her limits on that. I believe she's getting more confidence right. physically. So don't underestimate the value of play. She loves to explore and run around and touch things, and she feels confident doing that because she knows that we won't let anything bad happen to her. Step back and watch where your child's curiosity takes them. Young children are like scientists, and you can cultivate their interest in the world by enabling exploration. Watch them, and you will learn about the things that they are interested in and the very interesting people they are become. As we just heard in the video, physical activities exercise the mind as well as the body. 
Children learn by reaching, grasping, touching, and exploring their surroundings. As Dr. Ferguson says, never underestimate the value of a play. One of the ways that we like to encourage exploration is through reading. Our book today is called We're Going on a Bear Hunt by Michael Rosen and Helen Oxenbury. It talks about a family that loves to explore. Y'all ready to begin? Okay, let's begin. We're going on a bear hunt. We're gonna catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Oh, grass, long wavy grass. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no, we're gonna have to go through it. Swishy swash, swishy swash, swishy swash. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Oh, oh, a river, a deep, cold river. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no, we're going to have to go through it. Splish, splash, splash, bloosh, splash, splash. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Oh no, mud, thick oozy mud. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no, we're going to have to go through it. Squelch, 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 squelch. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Oh, oh, a forest. A big, dark forest. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. We're going to have to go through it. Stumble, trip, stumble, trip, stumble, trip. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Uh oh. A snowstorm, a swirling, whirling snowstorm. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no, we're going to have to go through it. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Uh-oh, a cave. A narrow, gloomy cave. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no, we're going to have to go through it. Tip-toe, tip-toe, tip-toe. What's that? What do you think it is? One shiny wet nose, two big furry ears, two big googly eyes. It's a bear. Quick, back through the cave, tiptoe, tiptoe, back through the snowstorm. Stumble, trip, stumble, trip, stumble, trip. Back through the mud. Squelch, squirch, squelch, squirch. Back 
through the river. Splash, 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 splash. Back through the grass. Swishy, swashy, swishy, swashy. Get to our front door. Open the door. Up the stairs. Oh no, we forgot to shut the door. Back downstairs. Shut the door. Back upstairs. Into the bedroom. Into the bed. Under the covers. We're not going on a bear hunt again. The end. Wow, that was a fun story. Now let's join Belkies for an extension activity on Explore Through Movement and Play. Hello everyone, my name is Belkis Hernandez. I am one of the Basics Houston bilingual educators. Right now, we are in the Eco Station in the Children's Museum Houston, and I'm going to show you how to be prepared for this activity called Following the Bear Trail, that will take us outside to explore and find our friend the bear hiding somewhere. To get ready for exploration, first, we need to make binoculars. With this tool, we will be able to look at the surroundings, not in a better, but in a fun way. To make your own binoculars, you will need one cardboard paper roll so you can recycle from your kitchen, duct tape, but you can use any tape you have at home. Scissors and markers or stickers for decoration, but these ones are optional. What you and your child will do is first cut the cardboard tube into two pieces of the same size. Second, using duct tape, you will stick the two paper tubes together to keep them in place. Remember, you can use any tape you have at home. Third, you can put stickers or color your binoculars if you want, and you can make it on your own way. Now we are ready for the adventure. And remember parents, you can use any stuffed animal or toy to hide. Once outside, encourage your children to explore their surroundings looking for the bear. You can help your children telling some clues where the bear could be hiding. You can say the bear could be over a bench or I think I saw the bear under a tree. You can try this. You can go through the bunches or the grass to find the bear. And finally, don't forget to sing the song, we're going on a bear hunt with your children as both of you explore. Spot a big one. Gonna spot a big one. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Oh, look at those tall reeds. They're so They're tall. They're so tall. We can't go over it. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. We can't go under it. We'll have to go through it. We'll have to go through it. Swish, 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 swish. swish. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going on a bear hunt. We're gonna spot a big one. Gonna spot a big one. I'm not scared. I'm a little scared. It sure is dark in here. What's that in the corner? What's that in the corner? I see two big eyes. I see two 
big eyes. I feel one wet nose. I feel one wet nose. Can you help Belkis find the bear? Where is it? Do you see it? Can you see our bear? <gasps> there it is! Great job, Belkis! You found it! I did it! With this activity, your children improve gross motor skills and general coordination. Toddlers can practice balance, crawl, climb, and experience sensory exploration. This will help increase their stability and build strong muscles. Children also experience spatial concepts such as in, on, over, under, and through, as well as develop the language associated with these words. Well, we hope you have fun following the bear trail. See you soon. As you can see, exploration can take place anywhere you are, especially at home, while you're cooking dinner with your family or even taking a walk in the neighborhood. Those are great opportunities for exploration. Now, let's join Jacob as he shows us how he and his daughters explore like scientists at home with an activity called Sink or Float. Hi everybody, this is Jacob from Children's Museum Houston. I'm here in my backyard with my two daughters. There's Spike, say hi. And Ziggy, say hi. And we're going to be, because one of our favorite exhibits is Flowworks, we're going to be playing with some water today and show you guys some things you can do with water if you're at home with young children. So Spikey, go. Start the water. So we're gonna fill up, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fill up a tub with water. We have this little, um, this little storage container and we're gonna fill it up with the hose. And if you have a bucket or a pot or anything that can hold some water, you can do this at home. Just find some way to hold water. Uh, and what we're going to do is, you can see Ziggy's already starting, is we're just going to use some household items to explore water. So we've got, you can see Ziggy already found a measuring cup. Um, we've got a colander. Do you think that's enough, Spike? Or do you think we need a little more? Okay, so a little more. We have a colander where we can explore water going through. Perfect, go turn it off. Run, run, run. Uh, we have Tupperware. We have um, some very cleaned and sanitized medicine. Uh, what are these called? Syringes. <laughs> Um, we have some medicine cups, we have this little thing we found that has a cap that should be fun. Um, spoon, bath toys, and My favorite. a little spoon with holes. So, do you guys want to start playing? Okay. You just kind of explore and put some things in. Here you go. Um, now, if you guys have older kids at home and you want to do something like this, you could actually do some experiments with your tub of water. So, we're actually going to also... Yeah, it's water, agua. So we're actually gonna also do a quick experiment that you guys could do at home, and it's called sink or float. And all you need is aluminum foil and something that's heavy. We're gonna use coins. Um, sometimes it's good to use one kind of coin, but we only have a big uh, assortment here. We don't have them separated, so we're just gonna use coins in general. So what you can do is you make a surface with your foil, like a little boat that's not gonna hold water, so you have to curve up the ends a little bit so that it'll float on top without without picking water into it and making it sink. That's good enough. Oh, and Spike is trying to put some water on it. That's fine too. But Spike, how many coins do you think you could put on this foil before it sinks? One, two, three. Think it, do you want to keep going? Let's see what happens. And so you can, um, if you have older kids who are, this is a clip. If you have older kids who are ready to make hypotheses, you can ask them to make a guess before you get started on how many they think that the foil will hold. Um, so with our our age kids here, we're just kind of going, and I think we'll probably count it afterwards to do some little. Uh, a little counting activity. I was um, <laughs> and I'm about to get sprayed. 
So yeah, that's, uh, that's an experiment you could do at home in your water tub if you want to do something like this. Cool. Or you could just do some free exploration like we do at the museum a lot of the times. Um, because water is always a fun thing to play with. Um, it'll keep them busy for a long time. So, thank you guys, everybody, um, and I hope you guys are having some good days. Tips to explore through movement and play. With your infant, zero to 12 months, do tummy time. Babies should sleep on their back, but during the day, while they're awake, make sure your baby gets some tummy time. Move arms and legs. When you are dressing your baby or changing their diaper, hold and gently move their arms or legs. Talk or sing about what you are doing. Follow their interest. Notice what your baby looks at or reaches for. If you can, bring the object closer so that they can explore it. Describe how it looks and feels. Give objects to handle. Provide objects of different colors, shapes, and textures. Use safe, everyday objects. You don't need fancy toys to keep your baby's attention. Play peekaboo. Hide your face with your hands and then open them up to show a big smile. You can also hide objects under a towel or blanket. Let them move around. Let your baby explore their surroundings by reaching, rolling, scooting, and crawling. Just make sure they are safe. With your toddler, 12 to 36 months, go on a walk. Stop when your child shows interest in something and talk about it. If it is something that is safe to touch, let them touch it and find out how it feels. Roll a ball back and forth. Make a wee sound when you roll it toward them. Play obstacle course. Make a simple obstacle course using blankets, pillows, or boxes. See if your child can go over, under, around, and through them. Make art. Your toddler will enjoy scribbling with a crayon or chalk. They can also experiment with folding or tearing paper. Play guessing games. For example, put a few objects in a bag and have your child guess what's inside without looking. They can feel, smell, and shake the bag. Act it out. Toddlers will start to imitate grown-up activities like putting a doll to sleep or giving it a shot. Follow their lead and play along. Let them problem solve. If your toddler is concentrating on something, stand back and see what they can figure out by themselves. If they get stuck, give just enough help so that they keep going and don't give up. Hi everybody, welcome back to Children's Museum Houston Tot Spot Exhibit sponsored by McGovern Foundation. I'm Danny. I'm Logan. I'm Jacob. I'm Allie. Jacob, is that your house? Yeah, this is my house. Do you want the grand tour? Yes, please. You guys want the grand tour? Yeah. So this, yeah, let's see. this is the bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen, the living room, the dining room, and the garage. It's a little cozy, but I like it. Wow, Jacob, that seemed a little bit cramped. How about we sing a song that'll get him up and stretching and moving, um, and also teaches us a little bit about tempo. Um, just in case you guys don't know, tempo is how fast or how slow a song goes. With this song, we are gonna sing head, shoulders, knees, and toes, and we're gonna speed up the tempo every time that we sing it. Are you guys ready? Totally ready. Yes. All right. <laughs> Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes, and ears, and mouth, and nose. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes, and ears, and mouth, and nose. Head, 
shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. A little bit faster. A little bit All faster. Right, here we go. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. One more time. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's do one more time. Here we go. Ready? Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. That's a good exercise. That is good exercise. I like it. You kept up with us really well, Jacob. That was awesome. All right. Let's try one more song that starts off with a slow tempo and builds up to a faster tempo. Do you guys know she'll be coming around the mountain? Yeah. All right. Let's try that one. Let's start off nice and slow. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain. She'll be coming round the mountain. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Driving six white horses. She'll be driving six white horses when she comes. She'll be driving six white horses when she comes. She'll be driving six white horses. She'll be driving six white horses. She'll be driving six white horses when she comes. I'll go out to greet her. Oh, we'll all go out to greet her when she comes. Oh, we'll all go out to greet her when she comes. Oh, we'll all go out to greet her. Oh, we'll all go out to greet her. Oh, we'll all go out to greet her when she comes. She'll be bringing milk and cookies when she comes. She'll be bringing milk and cookies when she comes. She'll be bringing milk and cookies. She'll be bringing milk and cookies. She'll be bringing milk and cookies when she comes. Pink pajamas. She'll be wearing pink pajamas when she comes. She'll be wearing pink pajamas when she comes. She'll be wearing pink pajamas. She'll be wearing pink pajamas. She'll be wearing pink pajamas when she comes. Coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. We hope you have enjoyed today's basic Houston learning. We would like to thank our sponsors, the Episcopal Health Foundation, and also Fox 26, My 20, for this program. Goodbye. See you next time.